I'm Bill Snodgrass, and in this video, I'm going to do a, an overview of Authentic's perfectly clear plugin for Photoshop. It's a, it's a, a really powerful plugin um, that has the ability to, to, to uh, greatly enhance your, your photographs in a very quick and efficient way. So I've already uh, started the, the, the process, and uh, I like to use some of the Photoshop tools to, to sort of uh, get things going. I, I, I used the healing brush a little bit to remove a, a little pimple from here and I used uh, one of the filters called the camera raw filter to sort of uh, uh, increase the depth of the blacks and the shadows. So now I'm ready to launch the perfectly clear plugin and when I launch it, it is going to come up with the interface so right here. Uh, it is already applied one of the presets to, to the image and you can see what the, the before and after is with the little slider thing so it is very very quickly just coming right out of right out of the uh, import has applied this what they call the vivid there is an intelligent auto there is a beautify and then there's more beautify and there's various um, different things that you can start with to, to, to get the, the thing uh, going. These are the tools, and we're gonna look at these each one. We're gonna go through each of the um, tools to get a, a sense of what each one will do. So we're gonna start off with the pre-processing set of tools. Pre-processing, uh, when you turn that on, uh, none, of these are, none of these are active. So real quickly going through this. Image ambulance is it's really great if you start with a bad image, which I don't think this was a bad image to start with, but it has the ability to, to um, very intelligently uh, correct overexposure and underexposure, and it has saved it has saved some pictures for me. Uh, I don't think we need that. Neutral density sort of changes the color space that you're working in, um, and sort of it, uh, it, to me it feels a little like it's a, a bit of a sepia filter. But, uh, and then there is color correction filter, which includes a sepia. So you can uh, change the color space that the software is working in again here. Uh, and there's lots of different choices that you can come up with. Um, I'm gonna probably end up using one of the looks at the end, so I'm going to deactivate that and turn pre-processing off entirely. The next is, is an overall picture tone. And there is uh, exposure compensation. There is depth of the color, and and how much you want that to um, change. You can uh, allow it to um, pay attention to the skin more. If I start with a good picture, I don't really feel like I need to use these very much. But I do like the light diffusion. What it does is it it'll bring the highs down a little bit and the lows up a little bit and it is it's as if you have put a a real nice diffuser on whatever light sources you may have had and it just kind of smooth things out a little bit um, so I'm gonna I am gonna leave the light diffusion on color correction uh, all of these are are different color correction features it has a, a sky enhance a foliage enhance so if I were doing a landscape this these would come into play a whole lot more different strengths and different types um, in this case uh, the color restore it is just kind of finding the colors and making sure that each one is is readily available to the eye and that's what the color restore does color vibrancy um, is exactly what you would expect how vibrant are those colors fidelity is um, the the truth how, how true is it going to stay to the original and do you want it to be just normal or do you want it to be like a vivid so these again uh, if you start with a good photograph these are, are far less important than if you have a photograph that is uh, flawed to begin with I'm gonna turn that off as well so now details, sharpening, and noise reduction, uh, it, it will do a, a pretty good job of finding some of the, the noises and get rid of those. And sharpening, I tend to like things to be just a little bit sharper sometimes than, than how um, they come you know, in, into, the, into Photoshop. So I'm going to leave that on. 
this is where uh, the the real power is going to to really kick in. It's going to be in this section of of tools here, face, eyes, and skin. And this is this is the thing that I spend the most time with and and, and do the most. First is the control points. Uh, the logic does a pretty good job of locating the eyes. Um, but you can move the dots around and then the square box is going to be its interpretation of where the face would be in relationship to the eyes. The, the documentation says that after you have applied these other effects, if you, if you feel like they're in the wrong place, then move the dots around. And I have occasionally had to you know, put the dots a little bit off of the eye in order to get the effect in the right place. But for the most part, putting the dots you know, on the pupil, it does a, a really good job of, the logic does a really good job of doing face detection after that. This is uh, just to show the dots. It's, it's the click that allows you to show the dots. So with the face detected, there was no red eye to begin with. And, and I don't like to let the software do things that it doesn't need to do. If there was no red eye to start with, I don't need to turn that off. I do like eye enhance. Now, the sliders go from 0 to 100. And I have found over the, the year or so that I've been using this that, that anytime I'm within the, the 30 to 60 range, it, it seems like a reasonable, a reasonable edit. Um, to go over 60, it starts starting to, it begins to start looking very artificial and, and on, on a picture that's good to start with. And below 30, it's so subtle that it's, it's almost, uh, almost non-noticeable. So a lot of times 50 or 60 or something in that range uh, is a good way to start. So that's the eye enhance, and that's going to um, toggle in it on and off. It's going to add a little sharpness, a little, a little pop to the eyes. Eye enlarge um, it is a potentially ridiculous setting. <laughs> it... it I found it useful in a couple of occasions where uh, the 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 moment of the of the capture the the eye was maybe slightly blinked or there was a strange angle to it or something like that. Uh, eye enlarge used with caution unless you're trying to create anime characters. But this does is is a good illustration of what they're talking about. With if you don't like where the effect appears, then you can go back to the control point. And, and move it a little bit and that's going to move the eye in large with the control point so if you wanted this eye to to enlarge then you may have to move that control point a little bit more obviously not this is not the look that uh, I would want to be going for so I'm turning that off uh, there didn't seem to be any distortion or any reason to do eye in large so uh, that one is now off Dark Circles is a really good tool. It does a great job of taking out those um, under eye imperfections. I, I don't like to say imperfection, but uh, the, the the psychology of the human brain. A lot of times, we will filter things like that out with our with our brain, even though they're present. We don't actually see them unless we're actually looking for them. So, um, using the Dark Circles tool um, is is um, it's something I usually do. Um, just to try to, to smooth th these things out just a little bit. And it's going to do some more in the in the skin section as well. Um, I don't use the catch lights very often. Um, sometimes they, well here it is putting it over and we could use again the control points to move where that catch light appears. Um, but it, it could add a little sparkle to the eye. Um, I, I prefer to, if, if I'm going to use catch lights, uh, a lot of times I'll just use the paintbrush and increase the catch light that's already there by just a little bit. So on the eyes panel, I, I enhance a little bit sometimes, and dark circle is usually kind of a, a moderate uh, amount of dark circle reduction. The next thing is face. Face contouring is going to slim slim the face. and it does a good job of slimming everything else around it. You don't see, even there's these little blinds back here, you don't see the, any distortion. It does a, a good job of doing that. Um, and just naturally, or it, it just creates a, a slimmer face. I, if 
there is sometimes the, the camera angle or certain certain types of lenses will make the face look a little wider than it normally is. So face contouring might be an option. If the teeth were showing, teeth whitening is something that I often do. And lip sharpening, I, I usually do. There's fine, coarse, and medium. And it just um, it just gives the lips a little bit more pop in the picture. If you you know go to the extremes on it, you can see what's going on with the lips. Uh, and obviously too much, but if they're completely off and there's if there's a softness to the lips and you want to define them a little bit, um, you can put a little bit of lip sharpening in, and it'll it'll just bring those lips uh, a little more vividly into play. The skin, uh, we have the option of doing full body or face only. Um, I'm going to do full body. There's types, there's subtle, there's default, and there's super. Um, again, this is going to be edit to taste, but uh, somewhere in that, like I said before, 40 to 60 range, you begin to start seeing the effect. And if you go too far, it, it, it will very clearly overdo. You may be wanting to go for this completely... Uh, super smooth effect. If you are, it's it's possible. In that case, you might want to go to super smooth. And when that applies, you'll see a, a great deal of the definition is gone, and it becomes almost like a, a I don't know, like a, a large brush paint roller or something, rather than the the fine uh, details. I usually use subtle or default, and I usually use full body, and I usually, as I've said before, somewhere between 40 and 60 gives a natural but smooth look. So any of the little pores and bumps and things, those have uh, been smoothed out using the, the logic of the, of the thing. So eyes, face, and skin. Blemish removal, it is a little different than smoothing. Uh, it will, it will more, more specifically target imperfections and remove those where smoothing basically targets the whole skin and so um, you can, using the, the blemish tool and the smoothing tool in combination, create uh, a very clean looking, very clean looking face. Infrared removal, uh, it takes out some of the reds that uh, are maybe not necessarily part of the skin. And then shine removal, it, it tries to identify parts of the skin that are too shiny, maybe uh, perspiration, maybe glare, maybe you know, oily skin. Uh, Vela has very little of that. We have just a little bit of light uh, from the from the um, the lights in the room, and I just take out just a little of it. But I still want to leave that definition line there, and I want to leave that contour in there. So that brings us down to the last few sections of tools. Um, the makeup tool allows you to do skin toning and it allows you to add blush and you can customize exactly whatever color you want uh, but just as a quick example full body skin toning I am going to use suntan and I am going to go to the extreme and you can see you know it does drastically changes the the tone of the skin and you can pick any set of colors that you would want um, the blush, I have used this on a few edits where I have wanted to put a little bit of color um, in the cheeks uh, and, and you can do the same thing. You can pick what color blush you want and the degree to which it is applied. So you can actually you know, do a few things. I've, I've don't think I have used the skin toning, uh, but I, have, I think I have used the blush a few times just to add some, some enhancement there. Graduation filter, this is basically going to be your uh, vignettes and things like that, graduated filter. Uh, I'm going to come back to that last. Uh, finishing tools, I'm going to do this real quickly. This applies to the whole picture. It's not just the, the faces, it's not just based on the face selection, but it's the whole picture and it's going to be the, what you would expect, color, temperature, tint, exposure, contrast. You can drop the blacks and the shadows in here as well. Uh, and, and get different looks uh, before your finished product. So that brings me to looks. These are filters that are available and there's so many of them to try to even begin to try to demonstrate them all. Uh, 
would make this video very very long. Um, but I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna go with something like um, early blue. Um, it loses a little bit of her eye color, but it's kind of a cool a cool effect. Uh, cold steel, uh, bleached. There's all these different look effects, and frankly, the you can spend as much time as you have to uh, go through and pick and that could be something that you might do now I'm gonna go back to the graduation the graduated filter I'm gonna use this one and I have the uh, when I move the sliders it gives me this red and blue that shows me where it is and so I'm gonna make it into the kind of the shape of her face so, and then I have feathering, which I can see how, how much it's gonna extend on the edges. Rotation, if you wanted to have it, um, and then size, so I can expand it and decrease it. And I really just wanted to sort of, and then there is a, I just wanna sort of contour her face with it, place the center, and it, it picked, picked a pretty good spot I moved it just very slightly now I, these settings down here apply to the outside so if I decrease the exposure it's going to be the things um, outside outside the blue is going to be not the inside so if I decrease the exposure bring that down I'm going to feather it more Increase the size just a little bit. Um, bring the shadows down outside. Um, maybe increase contrast outside. And decrease the saturation. All of these things are applying outside the circle. Then I can switch over to the inside and I can go through all the different settings again, applying a different set of color tools to the inner circle as opposed to the outer circle. When I click the apply button, it is going to send this back to the layer that I started with and it will apply these um, settings to that layer and we end up with this edit. This was what we took into the plugin and this was the, the picture that we started with. The, so you can see the the uh, camera raw in the healing brush resulted in this and then perfectly clear results in this I'm gonna throw my watermark on it and I'm ready to send this to the client so that's that's the tutorial I hope it was helpful for you I hope it uh, might give you enough interest that you might want to take a look at perfectly clear if, if you do a lot of portrait work um, and and I do I don't do a lot of, of work with this with landscapes, but it has uh, I have I had a, a, a real estate person that sent me a picture and tell me asked me if I could make it look better, and I used the I used the, some of the landscaping features to do that to um, you know, sort of bring the grass colors out and clean up the sky and things like that. So uh, it's it's very powerful, um, and so it's perfectly clear from Authentic. It's a plugin works inside Photoshop and. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Hopefully it was helpful. If you're thinking about buying it or if you already have it, uh, so there it is. Thanks for watching. Uh, again, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, like, click, comment. And thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next video.